but there's always something in there. Just come to fit this back, I've tipped it up and we've got a problem with connection on the trap. This little uh, array of pipe work. The copper bath that I showed you months and months and months ago can go in here. But yeah, tucked away in there, so we'll get this exposed out. I always say it, you've got to cover your arse in our job. So if you fit one of them before, you know how big them canisters are. So we may have to trim down part of the unit for that. And then I'll that's it, that's all I want in there. Is that all pressurised up now then? Also, what's handy to do when you're putting these in is just put these two screws in and just level the actual unit up. So what I'm going to do to get rid of all this microboard crap, I'm going to cut it here and then repipe it 15 mil to the rad positions. As we all know from the previous video, plumbers are carpet fitters. So the winner for the multi-tool and the drill is Right, hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. We've got a busy, jam-packed video for you today. We've got uh, radiator changes, we've got two port valve changes, we've got shower installations, and we finally got the copper bath that goes in at the barn conversion. I teased that months and months ago when the barn conversion started, and we're finally getting to fit that. Got a bit of a horse, horsey throat, little pun there, because I was at Cheltenham Wednesday, and it's still reeling the uh, aftermath of that. <clears throat> I didn't do very well. Sod's law, waste your money. Don't gamble, kids. The only winner is the bookies. Uh, right, so we've also got, at the end of this episode, I am announcing the winner. I am announcing the winner. Not no moody, spamming channels that kept popping up in the comment section of the video. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I am announcing the winner at the end of this video for the CAT 18-volt SDS cordless drill and multi-tool. Uh, I've got the guy's name, it is just here, there's a teaser, it's a guy, I've got the guy's name, it's just there, and I shall let you know at the end of the video who's won it, depending where he lives, I may even deliver it myself, uh, but I don't know logistically if we can do that, which, you know, would be quite nice. And for all the new subscribers to the channel, welcome aboard, I'm Mark, this is just me showing you what I do day in, day out real world plumbing uh hit the link in the description below for 20 percent off the caterpillar drill and the caterpillar multi-tool have a look at the link below it's in the description have a look uh it's 20 percent off if you need an sds drill i've used it a good few times they're good as gold the multi-tool is really good as well so i get 20 percent off that it will be in the description right let's get on with today's video right today's little job is in here, this little uh, array of pipe work. So what we've got here is this two port motorised valve is leaking from, as you can see, in the actual body here. And what it's done over time, it's got inside that and it's been tripping the electric out to all of this. The electrician's come out thinking it was the electric, but it's water getting into there, obviously from there. So I picked another Honeywell one up. So we'll get this swapped out, get this drained down. Hopefully I can just isolate the pump Isolate on that three port valve, drain it down here and be able to switch this over fairly straightforward. Um, and then control centre there to see if we can get it wired back into there. But I'm just dubious of turning the power off to this lot because the customer's just said when the power goes off, all the memory loses for all the heating system and it's apparently a bit of a nightmare. So I'm going to try and change that and then I think the electrician's coming back at some point anyway so we might just leave because it's been disconnected for six months or so um we can leave it and he can connect it into there got the old grips from my little jobbing bag
So that was swapped out fairly straightforward enough. I've opened that pump back up now. That's working anyway with the heat in. We filled this back up, but what is what we're going to do is I'm going to leave this one here because the electrician's coming out later on. You can connect that into there. So we'll leave that for the electrician to do shortly. Just saves getting in there, to be fair. So that's that motor as well, swapped out. Fairly straightforward enough. As I said, I isolated it here. Isolated it here. Open this up, drain just this little bit of the coil. Obviously that goes into the hot water in your cylinder. Just drain that down, swap, swap that out, connect it back in and refilled it. What I'm gonna do is, that's the old one. It's still connected into the wiring center. Um, the electrician's back later on. He's got to turn the power off to do some bits and bobs. He's gonna come and do that, which suits me, so I can get on now. Nice easy Monday morning job. So now we're at the point where the copper bath that I showed you months and months and months ago can go in here. So we're just unpacking it now out of here. It's sat in that for about three or four months. But now this bathroom's been wiped down. We've just got to sweep up a little bit in here, clear it out, and then it will sit there just where that tap is and see it in position for the first time, see what it looks like. But I think it's going to work well with that as well, isn't it? I reckon. I just think it will look good. But yeah, it's tucked away in there, so we'll get this exposed out. I originally showed you that this was going to have a copper bath in, and it's been wrapped up, and it's now, we've got it all out, we've got to make the waste into the bottom of it. Now, what I normally do is put silicon around these wastes, but I'm just conscious, because this is nickel plated inside, I'm just conscious if any silicon might react to the nickel plating on the bath. So it comes with a washer, like a rubber washer. So I'm going to use that, and obviously the washer underneath. So I'm going to use what they supply, just because I'm wary of this nickel plating. So we'll tip the bath over. Ooh. Be a bit careful, look at that. Look at the finish on it, stunning. And then we'll get the waste made up into the bottom of it. We just... Just the detail in it. It's so, so nice. As I said, I just don't want to put any silicon onto it. Underneath, all right, underneath is copper, but because it's been nickel plated, I'm just uh, a little unsure to be fair. That's that waste in now, tightened in, and we just had to make sure that it was central inside here. But that ain't in already, mate. Yeah, we've got to go to the same It's a shame though, you cover up all the, the, the work on them taps. And, uh... Right, Tuesday morning, back at the barn. We're gonna, today we're gonna concentrate on getting this bath fitted so it's in, done, and we can move on from this bathroom. So, so I've been and picked up a trap, a flexi, and some elbows. Because the waste is under the bath, obviously we've gotta get the pipe work in connected and then drop the bath down on top of it. Yes, you could get a waste fit in that you sort of set everything out underneath and then screw it in the top. But A, I personally don't like them. B, we, that won't work with that style of bath that we've got. So that is the way we're gonna do it on this bath. So what I'm gonna do is lift that back edge up, put some, probably some of that polystyrene under that back edge, hold it up while I connect underneath then we can drop it down and then when the bathroom's had a complete wipe down, what Scott will do is seal around the bottom of the bath. But it's just a shame. I say this a lot about freestanding baths. That if they always, or a majority of the time, they cover the taps. Those taps are really nice looking taps. Anyway, let's get this lifted up and get the waist connected underneath. Right, there's always something out there. Just come to fit this bath. I've tipped it up 
and we've got a problem with the connection on the trap compared to the connection on the waist. I'll show you. So you can see the bottom of the waist is it's got like a lip on it around there. So the trap here has got this lip. Usually I've, I took the washer out, but usually have a little washer in there. And it usually sits internally, that lip usually sits internally on the waist. Whereas on this one, it's got nothing. So the washer would be in that groove there and it would sit in there and seal. So what I'm gonna do is cut this outer lip off here. So it's just this bit here that's gonna sit flush with the bottom of the trap. I'm gonna give it a go and uh, see how it fits and see how it tightens on. Because usually you get a feel for something when you're trying to, trying to tighten it up, you get a feel for it. But that washer has got to sit flush all the way round, but it's just not going to with that lip there. So there's always something, can there? Right, I've trimmed the top of that off. I'm just going to rub it down a little bit just to get it completely flat. I'm just taking that little bit off. But what it will do now, it will allow us to get that flush, obviously, that washer will go in between. I don't think I can do it one handed, but it will go like so, and then tighten into it. So just a little tweak on that trap. So I'm just gonna rub that down, get that flat on the top, and then uh, get that in position, get the flexi onto it, and then we can lift that bath back on a little polystyrene at the end, connect it in and get it tested. What I'm gonna do is try and get some really clean water in a brand new bucket, put it down it, and we can test that before it's completely sealed in. Right, that's the droopy flexi on. I know people are gonna go in at me for the flexi, but with these freestanding baths where you can't get to anything underneath and all that sort of stuff, I find them the easiest way to do it. Never had an issue with them. I know some people may have done, but each, as I always say, each their own, do it the way you wanna do it, but that, works a treat for A, what this bath is gonna be anyway, because to be honest, I don't see it being used that much. It's gonna be more decorative than anything, but let's get it in now. Oh, look at me lying down on the job, look. Right, this is the gap we've got to connect this waist underneath this bath. So what we've got here is the waist coming out the floor. We're gonna get an elbow, a bit of pipe onto there. I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that. And then, this flexi will connect in the end there and then after we've done that we can drop the bath down I can put some water through it and then what I can do is just lift up that end but ever so slightly and just check that that trap's not leaking because I have got my reservations with it I've got my concerns you can see the, the washer in there it looks like it's clamped on it looks like it's got it but but until we put some water down it we're not going to know, so let's get this done. I probably won't film it because it's tricky. I've got to get under there, but we'll get that done and we'll see, see where we're at with it. Right, so it's been a while now since the bath went in. So the waste, the solvent won't on the waste will have gone off. I've got a gorilla tub full of cold water because we haven't got the water on yet to the bath. So I've filled a gorilla tub up with cold water because I want to pour it in and check underneath. But what I'm gonna do, just to cover my ass, I always say it, you've got to cover your ass in our job, is I'm gonna to speak to Scott, who owns the house, who owns the bath, who owns everything, um, if he's all right. I might even get him to come and do it, to be fair, because even though it's a new grill at all, and it's clean and it's clean water, I just, I'm just dead conscious about marking inside there. I'm sure you can understand. So I'm gonna, get hold of him, see if he's all right with it, and then we can run that through the bath. And then what I'll do, I'll let it drain out completely and then just lift this corner up and just have a look under there and see if it's all right. Hopefully, touch wood, it is. But if it's not, we'll have to uh, go from there. Right then, here we go. Let's pour a bit of water for the first time down into this bath and then make sure it's okay. So, so this is a clean bucket of water. So 
So what we'll do, we'll flush that through. That's gone down there. What I'll do is wait for that to drain out. And then what we'll do, we'll lift the edge of this bath up and just see if, if it's all okay. I'm hoping, I'm just hoping those seals are okay on the, on the trap. It's the only way of trying it, to be fair. So, it's draining away, right, anyway. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is lift the edge of this bath up, check out underneath, and hopefully, touch wood, some of you may notice I'm quite superstitious, touch wood, and make sure it's all okay. Right, let's have a look. <laughs> So that's all dry under there. I'm just poking, I'm using my phone for this, I'm poking under there. And I'm quite happy with that. That's completely dry. That's fine. Right. Yes, I'm happy. I think we worked. I think we're okay. I'm happy with that. So what I'll do, I'll take the polystyrene out there, drop it down. I might, over the period of the day, chuck a few more buckets of water down there, just to be sure. But as a whole, yeah, we're all good. So that's that bathroom, which is basically in that area there. That's all fine. We know we've got no leaks through the ceiling here. We've got no issues there with the waste going into that stack. So that's good. That's what we like to see. Kitchen, granite's going on Thursday, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, no, it's Wednesday tomorrow, Thursday. So we've had to get the overflow waste into this Balfast sink prior to the granite going on then what they'll do they'll drill the two holes or three holes out so i think where's the tap it's having quite a funky tap actually yeah so it's going to have the separate taps either side of the spout then the spout will sit central into the granite here or somewhere i assume we're going to go directly in the center of that window but yeah, so we have to get the overflows in prior to the granite going on and then the taps can go in. And then they've also got hot water cooker tap going in, which is here. So if you fit one of them before, you know how big them canisters are. So we, we may have to trim down part of the unit for that. Jack's in here, done the, uh, done the plant room. Looking very neat, mate. Looks spot on. But yeah, as I said, I've never done any sort of ground source, um, low loss header work or any, any of that. So basically Scott's got the renewables company in to get all that done. He's connected up out here. Got the two big main primaries that are coming back from the ground source. They go in through there and then into here. And then all that lot's gone in. Proper neat job. So is that going to be on? soon mate is it or well we've got a test on now for the ground source and the yeah. down there that's all tested and that's cool. on, on one and a half bar now and then our low loss header that's all on one and a half is that all pressurized up now then yeah up to our levers there and then i'm going to turn these on yeah um in about an hour or so right then what i've moved on to now is this downstairs cloakroom this is the last of the cloakrooms bathrooms en suites however you want to sort of word them, that we've got to do. So I've got the shower to go on here, riser on the top, rainfall head there, it's got the body bit, then also the basin, and obviously the floating toilet. But what that's going to sort of do is, this is the main entrance into the building. Scott being a builder, is obviously going to come out covered in crap. So he's done it, so he kicks his shoes off here, goes straight into there as a shower, before walking crap and mud into the newly built house that he's got. So we're going to concentrate now. Manifolds all done, ready to go. I think that's all connected up, wired up now. So once Jack's sorted around there, we can probably start getting some heat on. But for now, this is going to be what we're doing, sorting this shower out. I'm not, don't know if I like the green or not yet. I know they are going to have a feature wall here that's going to work a bit better, but just it's quite dark at the minute. But no, I'm sure it'll look mega. Kelly, who's sort of done the Scott's Misses that's done the interior design, if you like, knows what works and what don't. So let's concentrate on that. So this is what's going in. 
the grower. Um, where are we? Yeah, that one. Oh, so it is slightly different to the one we had upstairs, which is fine. Oh yeah, part of me thought it was the same as the one upstairs, but it's not. It's just a plate like that. So what we'll do, we'll get this off, get these made in. So I'm going to start off fitting the rainfall head. It's basically just that that goes in and then the the head sits on the end there. But as you'll have seen in the first fix of this I did, I always use outside tap wall plate elbows for them because you can bolt them straight back. And then when we put that in, that will be absolutely solid. There's no movement, no springiness in it at all. So little tip, use a wall plate elbow for your connection for your rainfall heads. Okay, so we've got the handles on, we've got the head on. We're just gonna start now getting the body of this shower into place. So obviously we take that out and then we've got four bolts inside there. We'll unscrew them, take this out and that exposes all the gubbins inside where this sits. But as I always say with showers, this is how I do it. Always get the book out, lay everything out so you know exactly where you're at with everything and then go through the book each page by page. Just take your time, there's no rush. You've got to get it right, especially with these grower ones, you have to put things in and trim things off and all that sort of jazz. So make sure you just take your time doing these. Right, that's the back plate out this shower and I've sealed around the outside of it as well with a bit of Dura Plus adhesive sealant. It just seals around there so that we're, um, we know where water's gonna get in there. And what I've just done is, got the silicon lubricant and gone round all the washers on this unit prior to pushing it in there. So what we'll do now is, as per the drawer in here, this just sits, slides in like so. And then, as you, I don't, don't think you can make them out, but there's the screw holes in there. So we'll get the four screws, get it clamped in, and that's into position. Also, what's handy to do when you're putting these in is just put these two screws in and just level the actual unit up. Because if you were slacking off these four bolts inside, you've got, I think it's six degrees just to play with, just to get it perfectly level with that and then tighten those four screws up internally. So that's the front sort of shroud on now with the chrome surrounds. And what goes on top of there is this chrome front plate. So what we'll do, we'll push this plate into position, get the front bits on, and then that's near on, that's sorted. But you do you do have to set, um, set the control knobs and whatnot right into the correct position. So we've got to work all that out shortly. But yeah, we'll get it clipped in. Right, there we go. That's that grower plate put on, rainfalls on, and the hand ones on. These hoses, they don't hang. You know, like, they usually just hang down. Until you've got some heat in them and started using them, it'll then hang low. But at the minute, it's all curled up. But that's that shower in, sorted. Right, so that's that done. We'll move on now to start getting this basin in. So we've also now got that basin in, into position and connected in. The hot and colds are connected underneath. Let me see if I can show you. A little bit fiddly under there, but they're in, wasting connected as well. As I said, this is the same basin unit as the one that is up in the bathroom. So we worked out all the measurements and that prior for this one going in, so we knew it was gonna go in okay. So that's that one in, and we've all got left in here. And the only thing we've got left in here now is floating toilet to get on but that'll be for another day okay so today's little job is replacing two radiators we've got to switch this one out we're going to go slightly short we're going to go to 800 double just because that's an old one and they wanted a double one chuck a bit more heat out make it look a bit better so we're going to go 800 double there that's a thousand at the minute and then we're going to go in here we're going to get this is a I think it's about 11.50, but we're gonna go a thousand double on here. Uh, it's 10 mil feeds coming into it. We'll get the carpet back, alter the pipe work under the floor and get that in there. We'll just give this room a bit more heat because these old rads don't really chuck out that much heat. And because the convectors, I don't know if you can see it's stuck underneath the window ledge, that holds a lot of the heat in. So with the, with the double, it'll throw it out further, convectors in there and it'll 
follow it around the room a lot better. So what I'm gonna do, before I even drain anything down, I'm gonna get this carpet pulled back and just see where we're at with the way the floorboards. The floorboards run this way, obviously joists are that way. I'd have thought being 10 mil, we can have a little bit of play on the pipes, move them around a little bit, but we'll get the carpet pulled back and see where we're at. So that's the carpet back, boards up. I've exposed where these two go into this rad. As I said, this is coming off, we're putting an 800 double in here, which will bring it roughly about here and here. So what we've got, these 215mm are feeding this rad and fully enough the rad that's going next door. So what I'm gonna do to get rid of all this microball crap, I'm gonna cut it here and then repipe it in 15mm to the rad positions. And what I should be able to do, if I get this board up as well, is hook two pipes through there as well to feed the one next door, which will make life a lot easier because Wherever you can get rid of this microball stuff, it's always better to, because it just, you know, if that clogs up, you're down to tiny, tiny amounts of water getting through. So what we'll do, we'll get the system drained now, get this rad off, get the new rad hung, cut this pipe work out, pipe this one up, poke the pipes into the next door room, and then we can get this one done and then move next door. Right, so we've got the new rad on now, the old one's off, took it off, Customers painted behind the rad just because it's a lot easier to get there. So we've got the new one on. What I'm going to do is just pipe up here, straight down, hook the pipe work round to here. So I'm just going to poke them through there into next door and then we can get this one connected up. And we've just got to move the furniture next door to get that rad done. But I just wanted to poke the tails through at least and then we can get the connections onto here. Because as I said, I want to get rid of this micro ball. So I've cut all the 8mm out, it's all here, best place for it. I've pushed two 15mm tails through into the next room so we can get onto them. Put two T's on here, so we'll come off, elbow into here, elbow into this to pick that side up. Then we'll come off there, pick this valve up, pop some copper underneath here and pick that valve up that side. So that's a bit of 15mm, we'll put that into this valve, We've soldered the copper going that way for the valve the other side and we'll just connect now into those two that are going to feed the bedroom opposite. Right, they're them 15 mils that we poked through the wall from the other side, so they're going to come in here, we're taking this rad off and putting a thousand by 450 double here. So them two 15 mils will obviously connect that side, come along, connect that side, replace the rad, and um, it'll be a much better job. But, sod's law, when you've got a bed there, you've got to pull the carpet so you don't get much room, but luckily for us, the boards are running the right way. So we'll get this underlay up here. And hopefully, yes. Oh, look at that, perfect. So we can get this board up, run the pipes along. Thousand will be a little, I think this is a 1200, so a thousand will be a little bit shorter, but it'd be perfect. So let's get this one off. Right, there we go. That's that rad on as well. Now, customer's gone out, so she didn't get a chance to paint behind there, but there's enough room to get behind, so that's not an issue. 15 mils coming in, connected that side, connected this side. So what I'll do now is I'll go to where the boiler is. Now it's hidden in a little cupboard in the bathroom. It's behind here. So we'll get this off, repressurize the system, make sure all the pipe works all right, refill it, get it heat tested, have a tidy up, get the carpets back down because as we all know from a previous video, plumbers are carpet fitters. So we'll get the carpet down, test this one as well and uh, we should be just about done for a Friday.
Right, so that's then rads done, that copper bath in, the shower done, the basin in, and what else did we do? That three port, two port, sorry, motorized valve that is now wired in by the electrician. Uh, right, giveaway time. I've got the winner for it. So the winner is going to win, as I said, Cat 18 volt, nearly ripped the headline out of the van, Cat 18 volt cordless multi tool, and the Cat. 18 volt SDS hammer drill, a brand new one in a box. This is the one I've been using, same as the um, multi tool, be brand new in the box. So, the winner, it so first off, thanks for everyone that entered. Um, sorry about this spamming guy or whatever, or these weird spamming accounts. Apparently, it was because I put giveaway in the title or hashtag giveaway or something like that. It's you know, that they, they can log on to it or they can run an algorithm or whatever they do just to cause bloody havoc basically so i apologize to everyone that got a, a, a thing saying they won it you haven't won it but the person who has won it i'm about to tell you but before i do hit the subscribe button hit the like button drop me a comment below just you know let me know how you're finding the channel if there's anything you want to know if there's anything you want me to do i might start doing you know like a, a question at the end of each video so get your questions into me anyway you want to know the winner so the winner for the multi-tool and the drill is charlie howell i'll put his information at the bottom charlie howell get in contact with me drop me an email or hook me up on instagram or whatever and i will verify that it's you from that account and then it depends on where you are locally to me if you're within sort of like 50 60 miles i'll come and deliver it personally if not i'll get it posted up to you but thanks for everyone that entered and there's plenty more giveaways to come i'm working with a lot of people now that are going to be able to do giveaways and stuff like that for the subscribers of the channel right thanks for watching appreciate it as always and i shall catch you next week